Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back for another edition of The World Outside Your Window. These are the episodes where I come in and I talk about what's happening in the real world. Sometimes we get so caught up in celebrity business and everyday fool out loud that happens on social media. Some stories just really get past us. And I wanted to shed the light on three particular stories as May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I wanted to talk about how sometimes neglecting your mental health can lead to certain tragedies. And with these stories, you'll get a bit of understanding of what I'm saying. I also have uh, down in the pen comment, the number for you to call if you feel as if you need some services. Um, I always tell you guys that the brain is just like any other organ in the body. Sometimes it tends to malfunction and there is no harm in reaching out when you feel that things are not quite okay with you mentally. So let's get into our first story. And it's a very heartbreaking story. It's the story of Arlana Miller. University, Southern University and A&M College in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, mourns the loss of their college freshman, Arlana Miller, penned um, a heartbreaking IG post prior to being found on a live late last Wednesday. Screenshots of Miller's final post circulated online showed she had struggled in her classes, and she has a it, she had suffered with a lot of depression throughout her years. Okay, I'm going to read to you her final post on IG before she committed suicide to kind of give you a guys an idea of what this young lady was going through she started off her post saying this day may bring may this day bring me peace and rest i have fought the urge since my early fought this urge since my early teenage years i gave this life all i had to everyone who has entered my life, I'm so grateful, and I can only imagine how this may find you. I have been surrounded by people who may have honestly thought I was okay, but I haven't been okay for a while. I struggled so much through this year alone, from COVID to tearing my ACL to nearly failing all of my classes. To the people in my life, I pray you learn to vocalize your feelings and get help always. I failed at that and I'm afraid it's too late. Mom, thank you so much. I pray you know I'm at rest now. You would have given anything to see me happy and you have given everything to see me happy. I'm happy in the water while, where everything is still and peaceful. I have written so many suicide notes in my life, but finally I've reached my end. I hope this teaches everyone to check on your strong friends and be, be present always. I'm contradicting myself, but never give up. I know that I'm letting a lot of people down by what I'm about to do. She goes on to say, but the truth is I've already let down so many people throughout my life and it just feels unbearable. I've lost my connection to God. The devil seems to have won and that is okay. I blame no one for this. I thank everyone for all they've done and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm thinking about how everyone else will feel about my death is not enough either. I've tried to please and make everyone else happy my entire life. I've been dead inside for too long. To everyone I love, just remember that this is not your fault, and I pray that you don't find guilt in my situation. To my granddad, I wish you were here to tell me I'm being stupid, to tell me it's not worth it, but you left me to find your own peace. I've always been stubborn and prideful just like you. 
I always dreamed of becoming so many things and I, that I am today, but they just aren't enough. I am not enough. I haven't felt good enough for a while. But I say all of this to say I'm done fighting. My bottle, my battle is over. And I pray everyone finds peace in that. Shortly after posting that to Instagram, she was found later on that evening in a river. Uh, I think it was the Mississippi River. Um, I found posts from her mother saying that, you know, she wished that she would have known RIP to her daughter. And that everybody, you know, mental illness is real. And I say that it is because here's this beautiful young lady at the start of her life who has suffered in silence so long and people walking around her thinking that she's okay and she simply was not okay. So as we are in Mental Health Awareness Month, please understand that there are people out here who suffer in silence. And sometimes we don't notice things, but if you do happen to notice something, check on your friends. It's the strongest people that suffer the most in silence. I'm saddened to hear this story. It, I struggled for the last couple of days as to whether or not I wanted to even talk about it. But considering the month that we're in and the fact that more people need to be aware that mental health, mental illness is real. It is nothing to be ashamed of. I just wish someone could have reached to reach this young lady before she gave up. Now she has, she's left behind parents who are devastated, friends that are still devastated. Such a beautiful life lost simply because she felt she wasn't enough. Please reach out to your strong friends as well as your weak ones. Be mindful of the people around you that you care about and how they move because there are so many subtle, not so subtle signs sometimes. But we get so caught up in our everyday life that sometimes we forget to pay attention to those signs or we disregard those signs. Rest in peace to Alana Miller. May her spirit lives on. May her story reach people and help somebody who may be at the cups at, of their very end. May they find peace and they get the help that they need. I'm sad that she was not able to get what she needed out of this life. It's just an overall sad situation. It's, it's, I almost don't know what to say about this. Because it's really sad. And being that I am in the state of Louisiana, I've seen a lot of stories about this lady. And how she was such a vibrant spirit. And people just had no clue of the amount of hurt that she was feeling on the inside. So that's why I say pay attention to your strong friends as well as the ones who vocal who verbalize how they're feeling all the time and you think that they're being you know a little over dramatic sometimes they're not i know we all have our own lives to live but pay attention to those around you that you care about because everything ain't what it is what it appears and again, rest in peace to Alana Miller. My condolences to her friends and her family as well. Moving on to our next story. A Spring, Texas woman killed her boyfriend after finding out he was in love with another woman. And he, it was also discovered that that man was married. His wife showed up in court this past mon Monday morning where um, her husband's girlfriend was accused of killing him and she was there to face the judge. Last Saturday, James Hargrove was found with multiple gunshot wounds. He was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. He lives with his girlfriend, the lady on the screen, Miss Karen Stewart, 
off and on for seven years, but he was also married to another individual. Karen Stewart now sits in jail on a $75,000 bond. Hargrove's wife appeared in court and said that they was married for more than 10 years but were separated in November and have been going through a divorce. She did not even know of this girlfriend, Miss Karen Stewart, on the screen. ABC7 obtained surveillance footage from a neighbor that shows a car pulling into the driveway of the home shared by Stewart and Hargrove around 1.45 a.m., on Saturday, they spoke with the woman in the video over the phone. She claimed she and Hargrove was going to let Stewart know that they were in love. The woman says she never suspected Stewart's reaction. She claimed Stewart went into a bedroom, got a gun, and shot Hargrove, right? The lady doesn't want her name out as of yet that they spoke with, the woman that he was allegedly in love with. But the footage shows that the woman was running down the street. And as she ran, she said she heard several gunshots. Records reveal that this is not the first time Karen Stewart, seen here on the screen, has been accused of domestic violence. Stewart was charged with a felony battery back in January of 2016 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Allegedly, she had gotten into an argument with her husband over keys and ran that man over with a truck. A witness to the incident told police he saw her spray lighter fluid in her husband's face. The charge was later dropped to a simple battery and Stewart pled guilty. Again, mental illness. This woman was in love with a man who was already married to another woman who was they were in the process of a divorce. While he's living with the lady on the screen, he met another woman who don't want to be identified, fell in love with her, and she and him went to the home he shared with the lady on the screen to tell her that he was in love with this new woman. Once he told this lady that he, she was in love, he was in love with this new woman, this lady on the screen went into a bedroom, got a gun, and shot him several times, ending his life. This lady on the screen already had a history of domestic violence. She apparently is married as well and had, back in 2016, got into an argument with her spouse and ran him over with a vehicle. And a witness to that situation says that before doing so, she had sprayed lighter fluid in his face. Mr. Hargrove on the screen has a wife that had no clue that Miss Stewart even existed. Oh, what a tangle web we weave. Again, that speaks to the mental health of a couple of these people involved. First of all, Mr. Hargrove was trying to do way too much and got caught up in his own web of lies and deceit. Secondly, Miss Stewart on the screen apparently has some type of disconnect going on with her because she don't feel valuable enough to let a man go. It may hurt your heart that someone that you have invested time with because the article states that they were together for uh, on and off for seven years. But in one act of rage, one act of desperation, one act of not valuing herself or never have been taught to value herself, she now sits in a jail facing charges for ending this man's life. That wasn't worth it. That was definitely not worth it. Self-love is the best love. Get into it. I, I don't understand that at all. Please. Ladies, please know your worth. 
If nobody ever made you feel like you were important, you need to know that you are. And if you struggle with that, that's a form of mental illness as well. And maybe you should go see someone who can help you find the beauty in you. It is sad that this lady life is going to forever be altered because of one moment in time. One moment where she lost it. Hmm. Moving on to our next story. The man on the screen is one Mr. Anthony McKinnon. He's 60 years old. Police say that he strangled his girlfriend, also seen on the screen, and then died of a heart attack as he attempted to bury her. This story comes out of South Carolina, and it states that on May the 7th in Edgefield County, police was responded to a call at a Trenton home about an unresponsive male lying in his yard. As police conducted their investigation, and notified next of kin, they found a second body in the fr in a freshly dug pit. Patricia Dent, age 65, was attacked and killed inside the home. Mr. McKinnon then bound her, wrapped her in a trash bag before placing her in this pit that he dug. Halfway through covering the pit, Mr. McKinnon put the shovel aside and tried walking away. And that's where he suffered a heart attack and died. <laughs> Once again, what's wrong with them? They not mentally all, to, all the way there. This man killed this woman. And turned around and tried to place her in this grave as he was trying to cover her up. He obviously started to feel bad. And when I say bad, I'm not talking about feel bad about what he did. I think he started going into cardiac arrest. And he attempted to walk away but ended up falling to his own death. Be careful. of the, If this ain't a baby... That old saying is, when building a ditch, make sure you don't end up in it. Mm. What could be going on inside that home that that man would want to take that woman's life? Not only did he strangle her, bound her, put her in a trash bag, he actually tried to bury this lady. The nerve. Again. If you know something ain't right, please do something about it. It's nothing wrong with doing something about a situation. If you know that you're not happy with something, leave it alone. But both of these individuals are now dead because he had a moment, got into some form of altercation with her, strangled her out. And by all the reports that I read about this Miss Patricia Dent, she was a very happy, go lucky type of woman. According to her co-workers and her twin sister, everybody that came in contact with her found nothing but joy and good things to say about her. So the problem may have been with him. The disconnect clearly was with him. These are just three of the stories that I wanted to bring to you guys today to say that, again, if you feel, and you you may not be able to, but if anybody notices anything strange with their friends or their family members, it's okay to say something and try to help. Sometimes things happen and we don't even know that there was a problem. I get that. But if you do notice any signs, Please try to help. And if you yourself know that you're not feeling your best, please do what you need to do. There is no shame in getting some help. Some people would say being mentally, you know, having these 
particular stories with the exception of Miss Miller, these are just evil people. To be evil, you have to have some form of mental break. So as we are in Mental Health Awareness Month, please take good mental health, take good mental care of yourself. It's okay to say you need some help and need to talk to somebody. The brain is just like any organ in the body. At any moment, it's subject, it's subject to malfunction. And just like you would go get your heart, your kidney, or your lungs checked out, it's okay to get your brain checked out as well. This brings us to the end of another edition of The World Outside Your Window. I hope by these stories that you feel some kind of way, that you become more aware of what's going on around you and the people around you. And if you know someone who is close to you or someone that you are cool with and you notice some odd behaviors, it's okay to try to uh, do your part to see what's going on with them. And if you are close to somebody and you notice that your strong friend is acting a little bit different, check on your strong friend. Because oftentimes, and I know this for a fact, sometimes those of us who are the strongest are suffering the most inside. Thank you all so much for watching. In closing, as always, remember you do not have to be great to get started, but you must get started in order to be great. And it is the depth of your struggle that will determine the ultimate height of your success. Have a beautiful weekend, everybody, and I will see you back in the den next week.